Six long years have passed since the first shots were fired. And still, our American colonies are fighting for independence. I believe at all costs, this rebellion must be put down. But how much longer can we afford the expense of this war? How much we cannot allow our good people at home to be burdened, while all the while sending our sons to die in some wilderness. The chair recognizes the Honorable Charles James Fox. France has entered the war against us. And while we stand here and debate, we risk the other interests of the Empire. Why then do we continue sending our young men to a war on the other side of the world? Guilford County, North Carolina. American soldiers are preparing to meet a British attack, which they believe could come at any moment. General Nathaniel Green, commander of these forces, has deployed his troops in three defensive lines. We are now in the third line, furthest from the front. It is here that we find men from the Continental Army, veterans from all over the colonies the backbone of the colonial struggle to win independence from Britain. Continental soldier Nicholas Milburn is from Maryland. He enlisted three years ago and has since fought in several battles, including Monmouth, Camden, and Cowpens. For several weeks, we've been carefully avoiding the King's troops for fear of their superior numbers, playing a cat and mouse all around the countryside. There have been some skirmishes between patrols, but that is all. In recent days, we've been joined by men from all throughout this area. Farmers, blacksmiths, and we may even outnumber the British now. It was General Green's intention to finally attack the British this morning at Deep River, not far from here. However, some of our scouts have arrived to tell us that the British are already marching toward us. So, the general has determined that we'll make our stand here. These are the British regulars, some of the toughest soldiers on earth. They are the muscle and sword of King George III's empire, which stretches from eastern North America to India. James Webster, commander of His British Majesty's 23rd and 33rd Regiments. A hero at the Battle of Monmouth, he has the rank of Brigadier General. We broke camp early this morning and have been marching since. His Lordship, Earl Cornwallis, has ordered that we strike quickly and decisively. Soldiers, you have been pursuing Green for several weeks now. Do you think the rebels will fight today? I hope so. I'm bloody tired of chasing them around the countryside. Brigadier General Charles O'Hara, one of Cornwallis's trusted veterans. I've been on many a campaign, and I can tell you, this terrain is more advantageous for the defense than the attack. We know the rebels lie ahead, but the, there are so many hills and vales that it makes it difficult to know what to expect. Colonel Tarleton's cavalry is ahead of us. Apparently, they have not met the rebels yet. We are now in the American second line at Guilford Courthouse. It is composed of two inexperienced units of militiamen from Virginia. Militia Major St. George Tucker. 
Our county militia joined up with General Green's army the night before last. I believe that together we are up to the task of coping with Lord Cornwallis. We are now back at the third line. The Continental soldiers are positioning themselves overlooking a steep slope, ideal defensive ground. Green knows his chances for victory hinge on the resolve of these men, who compose a kind of national army for the 13 colonies. What are you fighting for? I'm fighting for my country. But Private, is Britain not your country? It was once, but it no longer deserves our trust. The king has failed us. Indeed, the monster has sent his soldiers against us, taking our property, telling us what to think. No, he is not my king, and Britain is not my country. I'd rather die than be a servant to him. I had once considered taking up arms on behalf of the king. I had heard of a rebellion, but I had no intentions of joining it loyalty to king and country. But I gave pause and I heard that the British regulars, the king's troops, were pillaging the countryside, stealing food and animals from honest farmers. And then they came to my farm. And I've been fighting since. British Sergeant Roger Lamb. Trail arms! There is rumor of great support from the local folk still loyal to the crown. They were to furnish us with food and supplies, even men under arms. Blast if I see it. What will happen, Sergeant, if you meet the rebels today? Or rip the stars off the traitor's flags. This man, a field hand, was enslaved on a plantation in South Carolina. When the warring armies came close to his home, he ran away and was taken in by the British. When did you join these men? Just a couple of months ago. Why do you march with the British? What kind of loyalty do I have to someone I have to call master? The British offer freedom to anyone who will run away and join them. The Patriot forces claim that they're fighting for liberty, do they not? They don't mean for my people. We are now at the American first line. This, the most forward line of defense, consists of untrained militia troops from North Carolina. These men, mostly local farmers, are positioned closest to the advancing British. Militiaman Ned Griffin is from eastern North Carolina. I was sent here to fight in place of my master who stayed on the farm. He told me, if I fight, I'd get my freedom. Are you willing to give up your life for your master? It is for my freedom that I fight. They say this war is about liberty. Most of us are well past the point of safe return anyway. And we will never go back to the way things were. morning battle in New Garden a few miles from here is ending. Despite a dramatic confrontation between rivals British Cavalry Commander Bannister Carlton and Patriot Lieutenant Colonel Light Horse Harry Lee, the British have not been stopped and are now marching quickly toward this spot. It will not be long now before the main combat begins. I confess to you this is my first battle. Those sounds unnerved me. What brought you here? Not any love of bloodshed. Nor any great outrage against the British. I joined because I felt the war was destructive to our towns, families, to our way of life. I felt my presence here would help quicken the end of fighting and get all these soldiers out of North Carolina. That is what I felt. God help me, here they come. 
Lieutenant Colonel Light Horse Harry Lee. Collaborate, boys! Your land, your lives, and your country depend on your conduct this day. I have given Tarleton hell this morning, and I will give him more of it before night. You hear damnation rolling all over these woods? But after all, they are no more than we! It's 12.30 p.m., and the first shots of the battle have been fired. The inexperienced militiamen on the first line have orders to fire only three times before they retreat. General Green does not expect that the militiamen will stop the veteran regulars, but nevertheless, they do inflict heavy casualties on the British forces. Under Webster's command, the regulars are pressing forward. <laughs> 